Hello and welcome back to a video that is kind of a follow-up to something I did just over a month ago where I tested the nearest 10 rapid charging sites, so that's sites, not chargers, to my house. Six of the 10 didn't work. Of the four that did work, they were full, as in in use. So you could look at it as a zero of 10 success rate. But even if you thought four of 10, the 60% failure rate is simply not good enough. But that was a snapshot of my area on that day. It's not a, a great indication of what's going on in the UK as a whole. Last week, we went down to my parents' house, something I do and have done quite a lot on the channel. It's roughly 260, 70 miles there and of course back again. So I thought, oh, maybe this is an opportunity. We'll be pretty much going most of the way down the A1, bit of M11, but essentially what we're gonna do, we're gonna stop at all the rapid charging sites that are within a half a mile detour of the route we took. So A1, M11 essentially. I don't prescribe to this, well, three miles just off the motorway, there's a really good charging hub. That, that isn't normal. You would do it if you needed to, but it's not, it's not the convenience that we have to get in place for true mass EV adoption. So effectively, services, uh, you know, you've got your McDonald's, Starbucks types just off certain roads, off the A1 especially. So it's that type of diversion. And in total, we visited 16 rapid charging sites. 17 if you factor in the one that's at our destination in Clacton on Sea, that big Morrison's. So out of the 16 rapid charging sites, what do you what do you think the success rate was? Feel free to pause the video right now and put in the comments your guess. No cheating by fast forwarding. What do you think it was? Now, although the local rapid charging sites near me is very important for people visiting the area or passing through, this for me is far more important. It's part of the strategic road network of the UK. All these major roads, motorways, the A1, it, it, it's key to keeping people moving. You want to get your fuel in your car and then carry on your journey as quickly as possible. If there's a queue, if it's not working, it can really cause problems or at the very least a major annoyance which puts people off owning electric vehicles or even puts people off keeping the car that they've got and then going back to uh, petrol, diesel or whatever. Now I'm not gonna show you every single rapid charging site because that'd be a very long, boring video. If it worked, it worked. Uh, we'll just wrote it down if it did or not, but this is essentially what happened over the journey. The last time we spoke, you said that you love to have a mouthful of nuts, didn't you? Well, this is called the cluster of nuts, this car park. My heaven. Unfortunately, hello. Unfortunately, the genie point one over there, as you can tell from that guy that's really annoyed, that guy that's using the AC charger, it ain't working. Uh, as in, the AC is working, which is the slow charger, but the rapid charger isn't working, so. No nuts. So no nuts for you, I'm afraid. You're gonna have to wait until tonight. I mean, uh, until we get to the next charge. Mm, absolutely. Zero of one. We'll have to mark this down to, so we know what's working. Not the best start. No, well the next one should be all right because it's very bridge services. We'll and there's a, there's a few there. So. Head east we'll towards Hallfield Lane. So the nearest rapid charging to this place that isn't working is 19 miles away. It's considering we, we have 40 miles of range. Is a uh, is yeah, it's great. You can understand why people. It's going to use half of it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, see you in a bit. Ferry Bridge Services has a few chargers, so we should be okay on this one. Twenty oh, miles look, away. There's three waiting for us. Ah, fab. So. Uh, Got a choice. Yeah. Pick a number. Looks like a uh, new grid serve one. So. Do you not want to be the other way around, or is it on? Is it ah, on? this is at uh, the front on this one. Right. right. I'll go okay. plug us in. Plug and play. Then I'm going to have a wee. The chap there, uh, I've just had a brief chat with, and he's coming up. We're going down, and he said that the next one, that we're going to holiday in Doncaster, B Peoples, isn't working, which is why he's had to limp onto here, which is working for Chadamore on that one, but not Chadamore on that one. But the CCS appears to be working on all three. So this charging site's working fine, if not faultless. Uh, but there's no point in going to holiday in Doncaster because it's not working. I've also had a look on BP Pulse 
website, uh, sorry, app, and that's saying it's not working as well on their own app. So yeah, we might as well just skip that and go to Blythe Services. Blythe Services was working but busy. Mm -hmm. uh, then Starbucks El Kazli, which is just up there, also working fine. We're at Starbucks Mark and Moore, Instavolt, and we're about to plug in ourselves. Right, well that was not fun really. Instabolt are very good. We got 70 kilowatts out of it for a while, but it took me, what, 10 minutes to get going? The first You were out there for a go, long time. Yeah, first two goes, transaction cancelled. So, it worked, we've got us charge. Get up. More interchange. Take the third exit. But, it's not been flawless by any means. Next Enjoy time we do charge. this, next time we do this, we're taking the Tesla, okay? Hey, <laughs> wasn't me who suggested this one. Yes, it was. Your <laughs> idea. Lane to take the A1 slip road. Come on, come on, press the button, mommy. <laughs> no, don't you remember? Right. Hopefully you can see me. Um, we are now at Cambridge Services, so the rest has been fine so far. Um, Ionity, there's quite a lot of them here, all of them full, working of course. And there are th two grid serve ones. I think, yep, yeah, two. Also full. We've managed to get on just because they can do dual charging now. But it's absolutely rammed. It's currently seven o'clock on a Friday. It's half term. February half term, so it's not exactly, you know, I doubt, I doubt many people are going on holiday. So it's clearly getting busier and busier. The cluster of nuts didn't work. Ferry Bridge did. Holiday in Doncaster did not. Blythe Services did but was full, the, well, the one charger was in use. Uh, Starbucks, and uh, two Starbucks, one's at Elkersley, I think it's called, Markham, the one we used, both worked fine, apart from the fact that the one I used took three goes to get it going. Shell, Newark, wasn't working. Osprey, a, a pub, that was fine. Bennington Co-op BP, that was working fine. Grantham Services, also working fine, but busy. Starbucks Wittering not working, that's a shell one. Uh, Peterborough Services working fine but full, which is why we came here to Cambridge Services after we stopped at the Holiday Inn Huntingdon BP Pulse, which wasn't working either. So we haven't got a, a, a lot left to go, there's still a, you know, some to check. Right, well, we got to Clacton, the two after those 14 I've just told you about were working fine as well. And the one in Clacton, if you count that, uh, the big genie point at uh, Morrison's, that brand new store. Again, there's loads of the chargers, so that worked. But I'm not going to include that because that was our destination. So from the 16, we had five failures. So it's not far off a third. However, there are a few things which make me have some hope for the future, if you will. And then some things that worry me. The chargers that didn't work, they were pretty much the, well, <laughs> BP Pulse, Shell, and a couple of others that were, you know, like at the Holiday Inn. There were a couple of Holiday Inns that didn't work. Single charging sites that you wouldn't class as a normal stop off. So not the services, not a, a Starbucks, McDonald's, Costa Coffee sort of thing, just off the road. It was all kind of a, a kind of randomly placed, not great places to charge sort of stuff. So that doesn't worry me too much. They should work. It's again, part of the network, but not typical places you would stop at. The services, they're the big important one. We stopped at, I think, five in total uh, down on, on this trip. And remember, this is just one way. All of them worked. So this is the good news. All of the chargers at the services were fine. So that, 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 that's, that, that's very good. It just shows how far grid serve have come, considering the crap they inherited from electricity. Now, th there was a worrying trend as well with the services. So they were working, brilliant, but they were all full. All five services, with the exception of Ferry Bridge, which we arrived at first and it was quite early, were full. And Ferry Bridge was full when we left, I should point out as well. Rammed, not just full, there were queues. And when we came back as well, which wasn't filmed in any way, also really full. And that was a Sunday afternoon. It just seems normal. And I've done other trips over the last you know, year or so that kind of mirror that. They're getting busier and busier. There's more cars, electric cars on the road than ever before. And the chargers simply are not growing at the same speed as the cars. Couple that with the fact that pretty much all of them, apart from the Ionity ones at the services, were 50 kilowatt chargers, or up to. 
So let me give you an example of why that is really important in terms of we need to change it. The car I was in, the Subaru Solterra, forgetting its charging issues, you get a maximum about 46 kilowatt on a grid serve up to 50 charger. Well, any up to 50 charger, but obviously grid serve, they're at all the services. They have a higher standard to adhere to because they're part of the strategic road network. But anyway, 50 kilowatt charger, the car runs at 46 kilowatts. We also visited a 150 kilowatt charger, an Instavolt. That's a 400 volt charger. That stopped, uh, stopped or maxed out, if you will, at 70 kilowatts. That's just the nature of a 400 volt charger. But effectively, a 50 goes at 46 ish. A 150 charger went at 70 odd. A 300 or up to 300 kilowatt 800 volt charger that went just over 100 kilowatts. So we're talking major differences. The Ionity 100 kilowatts, the grid serve at the same services, the 50s, half the speed. And that's a slow charging car. If you got, uh, let's say, an Ionic 5 that can charge at I think it's something like 230 kilowatts. So on, I on Ionity, it will peak at 230. But on an up to 50 charger, it will sit there at about 46, 47. So the throughput of these chargers is so much slower because of the maximum speed of them. Now, it's not necessarily a problem with the network. It could be more than likely the local power grid or the, the connection that the services has that's the issue. But whoever is responsible for that, whether it's the government, the national grid, the services, the network, whoever it is, that needs changing. For me, we're at the stage now where the technology of all the new EVs coming out and just sheer amount of cars, I don't think anything should go in below 300 kilowatt, 800 volts. I mean, I know that's impractical in a lot of places and you'd say, I'd rather have some 150s than wait until the power grid gets better. I get that, but the aim, the goal should be 150 minimum, but ideally 800 volt, 300 kilowatt, more future-proof chargers. But then we get to numbers as well. There are eight, I think, fast, or oh, sorry, rapid chargers at rugby services. And then another eight next to them for the Tesla supercharger network. That's seen as a bit of a flagship in the service area network. It's really good. But I've seen that full quite a lot. I've heard a lot of people say, I've just been to rugby and they were all full. There was queues, even though there's eight plus eight. And I know Teslas aren't necessarily what you call public, but you get my point. I genuinely believe now that, again, if we, in an ideal world, if we could pick it, 16 is the minimum at a service area. Remember, strategic road network. This is part of the country's core. Remember, cars are getting sold in record numbers, electric cars. So in another year's time, 16 might not be, well, it's all right, but it's, it's not quite enough. It, we need to ramp it up. Whoever's responsible for all these little bottlenecks, the amount of charges, the speed of chargers and therefore the grid connection. It's 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 worryingly slow at getting or keeping up with the amount of cars being sold. And this is my big issue now. And it's something that I have monitored over the last eight years of electric car driving and probably five or six years of doing this channel properly. It's kind of gone like that for a few years. You know, the chargers and the cars went up together but now cars have just gone like that and chargers are carrying on. It's it's not good enough, quite frankly. We, we, we need a, a legislative body and something like uh, Ofgem, Ofcom, that sort of thing. It's going to cost money. It's going to be a lot of private money. There might be some public money. But if they're serious, if we have to have full EV adoption by, well, let's say, say 2040, realistically, because 2035, you can still buy a plug-in hybrid and you don't have to plug them in. And then again, new cars aren't going to disappear. You can still get a one-year-old car in 2036, a two-year-old car in 2037 that's still petrol. Um, so realistically, we've got 15 to 20 years to get this sorted out. But why wait? We need it now. People are getting annoyed. Even electric car people are getting annoyed. How many videos have you seen on YouTube over the last couple of months of channels jumping on the let's bash EV sort of bandwagon? Because the network is genuinely getting worse. And I've done a video as well, because it is. A third didn't work. All of them at the key areas were busy and rammed. A uh, little tip, if you're going down the A1, the four Instavolts at the two Starbucks, no one seems to know they're there. They always seem to be free, so use them. Right, I'm done. Uh, if you want to be a member, it's 99p for a month. 
you get videos like this early. You get videos that are just for members occasionally and there's a members only live stream every month just for you. Like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.